Adventure Time is remarkable when it comes to implementing semi-abstract and highly provocative dream sequences for its characters. We've seen these many times before. And in Stakes, even Yun Marceline comments on how she doesn't want to sleep because My dreams are weird. Which was an adorable little nod to the three dream sequences that take place during the miniseries. In the first dream sequence, Marceline's self-identity is established, along with foreshadowing of events about to unfold later in Stakes. Marceline has been a vampire for hundreds of years, but she was turned against her will and continues to struggle with her immortal existence. One of her fears manifests in the first dream sequence, which is the fear that her vampirism would lead her to unwillingly harm those around her. Marceline is afraid that her vampire instincts and impulses will materialize without her even being aware of it. This is visualized by her fangs elongating and performing actions with a mind of their own while Marceline is asleep. She fears that she may become the very thing she tried to exterminate all those years ago. Marceline has committed to drink red from objects rather than to drink blood, but the desire for blood no doubt always haunts her, and her fear of succumbing to that desire is explored in this dream. Her response to finding out what she has unintentionally done is removing her fangs, which signifies shedding her identity as a vampire. But she can't rid herself of her vampire identity without coming undone. She is depicted as literally falling apart when she removes the vampirism from herself. In this case, the literal depiction of coming undone also represents figuratively coming undone. Marceline's identity has been tied to being the vampire queen for so long that she's not sure what her identity would be independent of that characteristic. This confusion about self-identity is explored more in the two other dream sequences and stakes. The five pieces of Marceline representing her vampirism take ominous forms and reach out to grasp her. That's foreshadowing to the five-head vampires Marcy absorbed coming back to life and going after her, whether to kill her or gain her alliance. This scene is also figuratively depictive of the detrimental effect these entities have on Marceline's mind and sanity, which by the end of stakes actually results in a potential psychosis. The second dream sequence is about Simon and Betty living a happy and idyllic life together, with Marceline involved in Simon's life as a close friend who visits them for dinner. It's an especially saccharine dream sequence depicting Simon and Betty in love, living in a quaint home accompanied with vignetting and soothing background music and vocals. This dream depicts Marceline's most sought after wish, that the person she cares deeply about, Simon, finds absolute happiness. Prior to losing consciousness from Hierophant's poison, Marceline was recently fighting the Empress and was dreading that she yet again hypnotized, or worse, turned Simon. Marceline had recently undergone a surge of strong emotions regarding Simon, culminating with happiness that everything turned out alright. I'm just glad Simon is okay. It makes sense for her next dream after such an event to be about Simon, and it's a wish fulfillment dream. In the dream, Simon and Betty both show signs of aging by having additional wrinkles, though their hair hasn't started to gray yet. Marceline does have a gray streak through her hair though, in addition to her dignified yet cordial attire which represents maturity and implies she has aged as well. It can be argued that another reason Marceline views immortality as a negative is because the Ice King also appears to have aspects of immortality, at least the non-aging kind. You're gonna be the Ice King till the sun blows up! So detaching immortality from Simon is akin to detaching his crazy Ice King persona that he's been subjugated to for hundreds of years. If he wasn't Ice King, Simon could be happy, and I think Marceline is integrating this concept onto her own identity as well. She thinks that perhaps she could stop feeling messed up if she was mortal. This dream sequence was all about Marceline mixing disparate yet semi-related elements of her life in a wish-fulfillment fantasy. That is, until Finn and Jake's burps mess up her stream of thoughts. The last dream sequence relates to Marceline pondering on life as a mortal. And what better signifies mortality but death, of course. This dream depicts Marceline imagining herself as a mortal many years later as she approaches her point of expiration. Marceline's self-image of herself at old age is a bit off from reality, of course, with reality being a bit less gracious. This dream sequence was by far my favorite, because it's not fueled by one simple emotion like the other two dreams in stakes, fear and happiness respectively. Instead, this is a dream pondering a potential unknown, and it accompanies all the confusion that a stream of consciousness, or unconsciousness rather, on such a subject would contain. 
The dream almost feels neutral in tone, perhaps even verging on being insipid. I think the vagueness and the odd feeling in the dream is indicative of Marcy's honest feelings towards the thought of a mortal life. She is still not sure about mortality and whether it would actually make her happier. In this dream, Marcy and Princess Bubblegum are living together in the same cabin PB has taken up residence in. In the yard outside, Peppermint Butler is shown digging a grave, Marceline's grave. This harks back to Bonnebel's comment in the first episode of the miniseries. And someday, when you die, I'll be the one who puts you in the ground. Marceline strums on her guitar while singing a song, despite her own hearing pretty much being shot due to old age, which is why PB's voice initially has that hollow ring to it. They were growing too tall. The meaning to the lyrics of this song, by the way, are amazing. The allegory of Princess Bubblegum killing flowers she calls weeds because they were growing too tall, that is just so spot on to describe PB's character. It is representative not only of Princess Bubblegum's mindset regarding many things, but also of actual actions PB has taken in the past in regards to ruling her kingdom. I was just blown away how seamlessly the subtle yet apt account of PB's character was implemented with the rest of the dream sequence. Just one example of how the writers behind Adventure Time are completely brilliant. As to why PB is wearing a hanbok, which is a traditional Korean dress, I think it's partially a case of why not, since Marcy and PB have always indulged in changing up their outfits. But the outfit also does emphasize Bonnebel's beauty and youth and femininity, which further goes towards establishing the contrast to Marceline's decrepit state of old age. In the modern day, hanboks are traditionally worn for festivals or celebrations, so it might just be that the event being celebrated here is Marceline's impending death, which, while morbid, is very in tune with the sort of stuff Adventure Time goes for, and continues the disturbingly playful tone established earlier about Marceline being put in the ground. Marceline is eventually woken from this dream sequence by the outside world. Princess Bubblegum is shedding tears which fall on Marcy's face, and in the crumbling dream state these take the form of rain, and the moon is represented by the moon, and along with the incessant wailing of <coughs> Marceline finally comes to, just in the nick of time. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of Marceline's dreams, and if you have thoughts, comments, or different interpretations, I'd love to read them in the comments.